questions. Welcome to the third module in the series Sources of International Law. In this module, we will focus on how to locate two primary sources of international public law, namely international conventions and judicial decisions of international courts and tribunals. We will also cover how to cite these international sources using AGLC3, as required for all your law assignments. So moving to the first of the sources of international law, international conventions, or treaties as they are more commonly known, it is important to be aware that treaties are published in four main areas. There are general collections, national treaty collections, regional treaty, treaty collections, and subject treaty collections. We have a range of links in our International Law Subject Guide to these collections. Let me demonstrate. You can find our Library Subject Guide on the Library homepage here. Select Law, the Law Subject Guide, and then select our International Law Subject Guide. The treaty collections are located on the right-hand side. These cover general, regional, national, and subject-based treaty collections. Going first to our United Nations treaty collection, so under the United Nations Charter, all members, all member states must register their treaties, both bilateral and multilateral, with the United Nations. This makes this collection both comprehensive and authoritative. It includes treaties from 1946 onwards. Also, we have the Australian Treaty Library, which is again a very comprehensive collection. And you can find this on Osley. This is a treaty library that can be browsed by country, subject, title, chronologically, or just type in keywords and phrases. It's important to access the treaties via the correct pathways. Google searches are popularity based and may not take you to the authoritative version of the treaty. It's also necessary to reference a treaty according to the treaty collection where it has been located. We'll discuss referencing later in this module. As mentioned in module two, the International Court of Justice is the primary judicial organ of the United Nations, and the statute of the International Court of Justice has been adopted by nearly every country in the, um, or state in the world who are members of the United Nations. Consequently, its decisions tend to be followed by other international courts. Decisions from the International Court of Justice can be located on the International Court of Justice website, in the International Law Reports, and there's also summaries in the World Court Digest. These summaries range between 1986 and the year 2000, and they're available from the Max, Max Planck Institute for Comparative Public Law and International Law. These are all linked in our library subject guide and easy to locate. So going back to our International Law Library subject guide, we can find, here's the homepage for the International Court of Justice, if you're wanting to look up their decisions there. If you're wanting reported versions, these are available in the Oxford Reports. Alternatively, if you're looking for a digest summary, you'll want to go down to the very bottom and you'll locate that here as well. And these can be searched in a variety of ways. If you want to browse and have a look at what they have, um, just go through to their website there. There is no coherent international judicial system, but rather there is, an, in addition to the International Court of Justice, there is a range of either regional or, or international courts, commissions and tribunals. Each one is established by an international or regional agreement. In some cases, they may be set up only for temporarily, um, for a specific purpose on a temporary basis. At this time, I think there's more than 60 different international and regional courts. Examples include the European Court of Human Rights, the European Court of Justice, the International Criminal Court, um, the Criminal Court for Rwanda, International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, United Nations Administrative Tribunal, just to name a few. Decisions from these courts and tribunals are published in a range of locations. There's Worldly, which is similar to Osley, if you're already familiar with that. 
there's the Oxford Reports on International Law, which we've um, already shown you to, as well as individual court and tribunal sites. So I'm just going to show you where Worldly is. Three, two, one. So this um, is what Worldly will look like. And you can either do an advanced search or search by, um, if you have the name of the case, the citation of the case, then you can search by law site. If you're wanting to do a topic-based search, you may also want to go straight to the international decisions and either select your tribunal or court um, and do a citation or subject-based search here. So that gives you an overview of the different courts and where to find their decisions. Um, next, we're going to go on to citation of international materials. So the University of Tasmania Law School has a preferred legal style, which is the Australian Guide to Legal Citation, also the AGLC. There are print copies available in Hobart, Launceston and the Cradle Coast campus libraries. Um, and we also have a law library guide um, on referencing that will assist you locate the online version of AGLC3. Please be aware that the online version cannot be printed and it can be difficult no to navigate. So if you can do um, obtain a copy of the print version, it is a lot easier to use. So I'm just going to show you where to find the online version of AGLC3 and where the international materials are located in there. So going back to the law library subject guides, um, now you're going to be going to referencing. And the very first link um, will take you straight to the AGLC3 guide. There's other useful um, material, so it's worthwhile having a look at this guide when you're doing your referencing. This is the online version of the AGLC3. And you'll see the way that it's organized. So it starts off with um, the general rules and how to use, how to do your footnotes and um, various citations in text, in footnotes, in your bibliography at the end. Um, this is all helpful. It then goes on to Australian case law, legislation, and secondary materials. You have to scroll down um, for international materials. So it firstly covers off treaties. Um, important to note is um, identifying the date when the treaty was opened for signature, signed, or the entry into force dates. So you, we've covered that off in an earlier module, so locating that information is essential for your citation. Also here you'll note the treaty series, so for example, the United Nations UN Treaty Series or the Australian Treaty Series uh, need to be identified in your reference. United Nations materials, so you may come across other materials such as, um, I don't know, committee reports, etc. Um, yearbooks, which we discovered, discussed in the second module. So then further down, the International Court of Justice and Permanent Court um, also needs to be cited in a specific way, um, including the report series details. Um, and separate to the ICJ is other um, tribunal decisions and how these need to be cited, as well as criminal tribunals. So just make sure that you're in the right section of the AGLC3 guide when you are doing your referencing. Um, and citing international materials is different to citing foreign law materials. So again, if you are citing materials from another country, you'll need to find that country in this list, be it Canada, China. These are obviously alphabetically organized. So that's um, an introduction how to reference international legal materials. That's something that the law librarians are always happy to assist you with. If you have any questions, they can be a little bit tricky and not everything will be covered um, clearly by the guide. So it is good to seek out your law librarian and, and discuss with them how to do your referencing so you make 
make sure that it's correct when you hand in your assignments. Um, we are always happy to talk with you and if you have any questions about any of the modules or referencing in particular, please don't hesitate to contact us. This is the contact details for the Hobart Library, but um, this also applies to Launceston Cradle Coast um, libraries as well, um, as they don't have specialist law librarians at those locations. So do contact us and we will do everything we can to assist you.